Hey, good morning, guys. Tush coming at you Wednesday morning. Uh, just came out to the garage for some breakfast. I'm just kidding. Although that's probably just as bad for you. Anyway, uh, just thought I'd come out in the garage and uh, do a bit of a chatting this morning. Uh, like I said, it's Wednesday. I'm working from home today. Um, so I thought I'd uh, just come out and have a look around the garage. It's actually filthy. It needs a good cleaning in here, so it's probably going to be one of the things I do today. Uh, I got some nice chrome parts. Uh, I got the new uh, stanchions done back from my windscreen. So these are nice and shiny compared to compared to those. So those are going to look good. So happy to get those back. And what else is new? Like I said, the garage is absolutely filthy. Um, did pull the 250 back out of the garage. Got the TR6 out of the garage. At some point, I got to get back to work on this guy. Uh, yeah, it's coming along, but just uh, too slow. So I got to get back to that uh, in the next day or two. Um, like I said, I think what I want to do today is I want to do a bit of a, a bit of a book review, a bit of a mail call. Um, so I'm going to set you up on the tripod, and uh, we'll have a little chat. Um, obviously, there's going to be heavy, uh, probably Triumph TR5, 250, TR6 related. So. Maybe not everybody's cup of tea, but uh, there's a few guys out there that uh, this might help. So I thought I would post it, and um, I guess if you get bored with it, you can tune out. Anyway, uh, we'll leave it at that, and I'll set you up on the tripod. I'll talk to you later. Okay, guys, I'm back. I uh, just wanted to make sure this is recording and uh, that everything's in frame and it looks pretty good. So I'm going to move around to my chair. I'm sorry for... Uh, some of the excess noise today, they, uh, they seem to be doing some construction work uh, next door. Um, and I'm hearing some uh, circular saws and, su and uh, some other sounds. So uh, hopefully it won't interrupt the video too much. Anyway. All right. So hopefully uh, this is going to be in frame. I'll do the best I can. Um, first thing I wanted to do was a shout out. Um, looks like HPR is back, uh, which is great. Uh, I know a lot of us uh, have missed him um, for the last uh, few months. Um, he kind of just uh, up and disappeared on us, and uh, we're happy to see him back. Um, he's asked us to do a bit of a shout-out for him so he can get some of his subscribers back. Um, he has opened a new channel. Um, it is HPR Auto 1. I believe that's it. I, I hope I'm remembering it correctly. Uh, there goes the circular saw. Um, so HPR Auto, <coughs> Auto 1. And if that's not correct, I'll, uh, I'll put the proper uh, title uh, in the video when I edit this. A um, couple of mail calls to do. Uh, first one I've got is a great uh, sticker from uh, Amherst, Nova Scotia. Uh, hopefully that's in frame. Uh, Rick to fix. Uh, thanks, Rick. Uh, love watching your, uh, your videos on the uh, Lenovo restoration. It's come along fantastic. Um, unfortunately, I know you're back to work now, so you've uh, got a lot less time to spend working on the car. So uh, things are going to slow down a little bit, but uh, hopefully you'll find some time in the, in the near future. And um, like I said, I enjoy watching your videos and um, keep up the good work. And uh, the other sticker I got was uh, from Tim's Beetle. Um, Tim subscribed to me uh, not too long ago, and I've uh, started watching uh, Tim's videos. Um, did uh, watch his garage tour videos and watched his uh, his work on his uh, golf that uh, broke down on him. So with the uh, broken motor mount. So uh, thanks to him for the sticker. It's a great. I believe you have these in different colors. I think I've seen it in light blue as well. So that's a it's a cool looking sticker. So I look forward to seeing uh, more videos from you as well. So thanks Tim. And uh, there we go. Um, so now on to the uh, the book review uh, part. And uh, like I said, I saw Neil mention a, uh, a practical uh, classics uh, book for John Kerry uh, yesterday in his video for the Jaguar. Um, and I actually have the Practical Classics TR6 book, but I actually have a lot of other books that I thought I'd do uh, sort of a quick review on. And I know this uh, may help some people like there's a, uh, you know, Dave Me or uh, My Blue uh, 73 TR6, I think it's Jeff. Um, there's a few Triumph guys uh, as well as Neil on uh, YouTube and in the YouTube Garage Gang. So I just thought I'd do a quick uh, blow through of the uh, the books that I have in my cabinet. Um, I can't bring them all out, but these are a few that uh, you might want to get or you might want to avoid. 
and the first two that I have on the top is an old Chilton's uh, repair manual and to be honest with you I don't really recommend it I don't really w look at this very often it does have some other models in here the um, the Spitfire the GT6 and TR6 but uh, actually it only goes up to 73 this one so um, it's not a recommended manual I do have it and I don't really reference it that often I do maybe reference it to do some cross checks uh, occasionally or if I can't find another manual I have this one available um, inside I keep it in my uh, on my bookshelf so that's the uh, the Chilton Triumph uh, TR6 or actually it's 1993 to 73 and it's multiple models not not overly recommended but again I have it just to have it same sort of thing with the uh, <clears throat> with the auto books uh, book again it's for the TR5 and TR6 and this one is from 67 to 75 uh, again, it's an okay book, but it's really uh, not really essential to have this one. Again, it's just a good quick reference book. Um, it uh, Again, most of the information can find be found in the next two books, which I think are sort of critical um, if you're working on a TR6 or a TR250. Um, and I know there are similar books out there. This is the Robert Bentley um, book. Uh, it's quite a thick book, obviously. Um, this pretty much has everything you need to know about. Uh, actually, this is the TR250, which is the North American model, but uh, it's pretty much applicable to the TR5, except when you get to uh, things like petrol injection. Um, the North American models didn't have the petrol injection, so these are um, mostly carbureted uh, diagrams in here when you get to the carburetors and fuel systems. So, uh, good book though, and it's essential really to have this book um, when you do. Um, any, any work on a TR6 or TR5, TR250. Um, there are other factory uh, workshop books and I'll have a little chat about those uh, a little bit later. I think, Neil, you've got a little bit different book than this. Um, and To be honest with you, they're, they're very similar. So anyway, the Robert Bentley is, is good. Then I also have the Haynes book. Um, now the Haynes book um, is again a good cross-reference to work along with side the Bentley. To be honest with you, the Bentley confuses some of us uh, Canadians and maybe Americans with the language, um, and the Haynes uh, sort of uh, doesn't. <laughs> so, uh, and the Haynes actually has some 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 better photographs, um, but some of them are you know are lacking in some areas. Well, the other is better. So, it's a good uh, it's good to have both books uh, for reference because you can you can go back and forth between the Haynes and the um, and the Bentley or the, uh, the shop, um, the standard uh, Triumph uh, workshop manual. Um, so it's a good book to have as well. Just uh, So those between those two books, those are really the two books I have for the main mechanical um, work on the uh, my TR6 and my TR250. Uh, <clears throat> the next couple books are, uh, are great for, for doing restorations. I picked this one up at a, a flea market, and it's actually an original uh, spare parts catalog um, from standard uh, Stampart. Uh, from Standard Triumph Sales, and the good part about it is got uh, it, this is a very musty smelling book if you can imagine uh, what some of these old books smell like. But they have great uh, diagrams, great breakdowns, and all see all the uh, all the part numbers listed for the uh, for the TR250 as well. So this is a great uh, indispensable book if you're doing full restorations. I mean, there's a great suspension uh, breakdown uh, diagram, for example. Um, it's just plate R, um, and again, all the corresponding part numbers to go with it. Now, if you can't find this book, uh, and I know obviously this book isn't available anymore, you may be able to track down um, the Roaster Factory actually has a similar book. Um, I don't believe this is any longer in print. Um, this is the, um, the TR250 spare parts catalog from the Roadster Factory. And really, it's the same um, sort of thing. Actually, it may be a little bit more clear with the with the colors and the the reference numbers. So it's got the plates as well, um, and they're great books uh, for doing again restorations, um, good breakdowns on the mechanical components. Um, so I'd highly recommend this uh, if you can find it. Um, again, it's not an easy book to find, but again, it's got all the body components, it's got all the mechanical components, all the interior trim seals, everything in here. So again, that's a Roadster Factory publication. 
Now they also have uh, similar books for um, the TR6. They have the blue manual and the green manual. Now I believe both of these are available online from the Roadster factory. Um, I've got the hard copies. I prefer actually to have the hard copy reference. But if you can't get the hard copy, you can always look at uh, the roadsterfactory.com uh, and uh, they have these books available there for you to look at. And again, it's uh, you know all of the plates and assembly diagrams for the uh, for the TR6 from uh, 1969 right up to uh, 76. And there's various plates depending on the the model year. Um, the books are broken down into more uh, I think mechanical components and trim pieces. Um, it's sort of essential that you have both books if you're doing a restoration. Again, they have all the part numbers and uh, plate numbers. Um, here's, a, here's one on the gauges, actually. This one's for a 69 up to 72. So uh, you get an idea what's correct for your car as well. So again, highly recommend the, uh, the green and the blue manuals from the Roadster factory. All right, on to the next. I'm just gonna move the stickers. Um, some other publications, and let me go back to, uh, this is the one that sort of uh, I was talking about earlier, the Practical Classics book, uh, which Neil had uh, talked about yesterday in his video uh, for John Kerry. So um, this is a great book. I've had this for some time. Uh, I probably had it for mm, 10, 12 years or so. It was an expensive book. It was 33 or $34 uh, probably 10 years ago. So. Um, I'm sure not too many people paid that kind of money for it back in the day, but um, like the uh, like the, um, rest, the Jaguar restoration, it's it's really great. They started with a very rough car, like a, I think it was actually a section car, um, and they start and they came back with this beautiful looking uh, British Racing Green uh, TR6. So it's, it's a fantastic book. It does uh, have a lot of photos um, of, of the restoration along the way. Um, highly recommended. I don't believe this is in print anymore. Uh, if somebody in the YouTube garage game would like to borrow this book, I would have no problem lending it out um, as long as I get it back. Uh, but it's a good book, a good, great book to read. And uh, again, they did a great job on uh, this uh, restoring this car from, you know, really a, it was pretty much a basket case to uh, really sort of a, a concourse uh, show winner. Anyway, great book. Um, and uh, like I said, hard to find, so I've got a copy of it. Anybody's interested in borrowing it. Um, this is another good book if you're restoring a car. This is by Roger Williams. Um, it's How to Restore the Triumph TR5, 250, and TR6. Um, and make sure you get the color version of it. I actually have the TR3 version of this and it's in black and white. I enjoy the color uh, much better. It's much easier to see the pictures. Again, it's, um, it's a good, great book on you know how to buy the car. It's got a good introduction on, on how to buy uh, a car to start with and what to look for. Um, and it goes into every uh, single component of, uh, of um, you know, suggestions on how to upgrade, how to repair. Um, it's a great book. Highly recommend it if you're getting into a, uh, uh, a TR6 restoration. It covers everything from every mechanical bit to uh, right down to interior and paint and even some uh, some talk about uh, welding and that type of thing. So highly recommend this book. Um, and this one is available. Um, you can get it at Amazon or, or wherever in your normal bookstores. So that's a great book to have uh, if you're doing a restoration or just do you want to do some upgrades on your car. Um, that's a good book to have. Um, this is a publication by Len Reckenberg. Um, he's basically a TR6 guru, and he's written this book, and it's called the uh, it's called the um, what do they call it? The Hub Book, the Hub Handbook, TR6 Hub Handbook. Um, this is an original copy from Len, and this is available online at a few different uh, locations to be downloaded. Um, I can give you the information um, if you're interested in downloading this hub manual. Um, I will give you the uh, download instructions or the, or the area where you can download it from. It's a great book, um, all written by Len. There are a few supplements actually to, uh, it's actually called Six Tech, I'm sorry. Um, it's called Six Tech. This is the hub manual um, to, to rebuild the hubs. Um, anyway, it, it is a great book. It's a great resource if you don't have it. Um, it's very straightforward and easy to understand. Um, this one's on, obviously, this little insert is for the Zena Stromberg mar uh, modifications for the 250 and the TR6. Um, so, anyway, this, it's a great book. And again, uh, it's called Six Tech. 
and uh, I highly recommend this uh, this publication. This one's getting a little bit worse for wear. I'm going to have to get it rebound, but anyway, I'm 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 happy to have an original copy of it. Um, a few other books. Uh, Competition Preparation Manual, if you're into that kind of thing, for the 250 TR6. Uh, it is from uh, direct from Triumph, and it's it's basically, you know, how to prep your car for, uh, you know, make it a little quicker on the street or even do some racing. So, um, good manual. Um, this one's from, uh, I'm not sure what date this was published on. Uh, looks like 1980 was the last publication of this. Uh, <laughs> Copyright Jaguar Rover Triumph, Inc. Anyway, uh, good little manual if you're looking to do some upgrades on your car, competition preparation manual. Um, <clears throat> a couple uh, buyer's guides. Uh, this one's really just a really basic uh, essential buyer's guide. I think I have another one that I didn't bring out. Um, it's got you know basic information on uh, what to look for and when you're buying a TR6. If you're starting to look for a TR6 and you're just in the market, it's uh, best to do as much research as you can. Um, because there's obviously some problem areas that you need to be aware of on these cars and do as much reading as you can prior to, uh, to going out and looking for a car. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, just a sort of a, a really great book, reference book. If you're into concourse uh, restorations for your car, um, this is a great book. Um, it covers from TR2 all the way up to TR6 and basically uh, tells you what's correct on your car. This is a little section on the Italia. If I back it up, or sorry, go forward a little bit, you know, it talks about the TR5, what's correct on the TR5, what's correct on the TR6. It talks about uh, changes uh, through the years, um, and it's got a really good uh, synopsis of, uh, you know, it's got dimensional information, all the information you can need, you'd want to know about uh, about the TR5, TR250, and TR6, um, including all the dates. Uh, uh, of reference uh, for changes, uh, you know, it'll decipher your uh, gearbox numbers for you, your body numbers, all that information that uh, you're keen to know. It talks about interiors and uh, you know cor correctness of uh, individual parts and pieces. So it's a great book, great reference book uh, to have. I don't believe this is in publication anymore. So if you find it, um, I've seen these to be uh, on eBay to be quite expensive. Um, but if you're if you're patient, you can probably uh, you find a copy uh, of it uh, that somebody's wanting to sell. <clears throat> Another indispensable book if you've got a TR250 or a TR6. This is a book written by uh, Dan Masters. It's the Electrical Maintenance Handbook. Um, this can be found. Um, I know it's on the Six Pack website. You can buy it on the Six Pack website. I believe the Roadster Factor carries this book. I'm not sure if uh, somebody like uh, Moss Motors carries it as well, but it's a fantastic book. I am not the greatest at electrical uh, maintenance on uh, anything British. Um, this book really breaks it down into straightforward language, and uh, it's indispensable if you own a British um, British car like the Triumph uh, TR250, TR5, or TR6. Fantastic book. Great diagrams, easy to follow. Uh, I don't believe it was too expensive. Um, and Dan Masters is, uh, is is a great guy to talk to. He's a good reference. It actually has wiring diagrams. Actually, um, pull out full wiring diagrams for each model. This is for the TR250, so uh, those come in handy as well. Oh, great book. Highly recommend this book if you're doing a restoration on a, a TR250, TR5, or TR6. Um, this is a good book as well. Um, now, my TR250 actually has Webers on it, so I've got this for the Webers, but if you look down here, it also includes the SU and uh, Zena Stromberg carburetors that are found on, I have SUs on my TR3, um, and I have Zena Strombergs on my TR6, so I've got, I run the gamut of uh, this book. So it's a, it's a good uh, reference book um, on how to adjust your Webers, uh, your Strombergs, or your SUs. So um, I can I can recommend this book as well. It's a it's a good reference book, along with a few uh, online references as well. There's a site uh, called Buckeye Triumphs. Um, they have a technical uh, resource um, section on their website. It's fantastic. Um, it's partic particularly for carburetors and transmissions. There are some great technical articles articles there. So just do a Google Google search for Buckeye Triumphs and um, look at their technical articles. Um, they're fantastic. And the last thing I have is uh, sort of a just a compilation uh, book that I put together of uh, you know items that I or 
things I found off the internet, PDFs and, and such. This is a uh, Lucas Girling uh, uh, service and part uh, uh, manual. Um, here's a, a colored wiring diagram. Here's a valve rocker adjustment uh, guide. Here is um, something for Neil. <laughs> It's an overdrive uh, unit uh, uh, service instruction manual uh, from the Standard Motor Company. Um, so that could have come in handy. Um, although I know you didn't want to get into the internals of the gearbox. Um, so there's some uh, two technical technical correspondence courses uh, for Lucas technicians. Um, this is again another overdrive uh, overdrive manual. Um, again, overdrive. Uh, here's a petrol injection MK2 uh, training service manual. Now, this is a great manual. If anybody doesn't have this, this is the uh, the uh, tuning standard triumphs by David Vizard. And again, this is sort of a performance manual. I only have this in black and white, but it's a fantastic manual if you're looking to uh, to get some more performance out of your uh, out of your Triumph. It's, uh, I do have a PDF of this, of this uh, book. If anybody's interested, let me know. Send me a PM, and I can uh, send you the PDF of it. It's great. Um, you know, things like lightening your flywheel, for in instance, it's got a great diagram and great instructions on you know where to take material off and uh, how much material to take off. Um, so it's it's great for that. Some great uh, you know camshaft carburation type uh, headwork um, stuff in this manual as well. Uh, a few other little things I found on the internet, you know, uh, refurbishing your door switches, for instance. You know, I got uh, a hard copy of that, how to take your switches apart, because uh, some of these switches are not available. So, you know, there's a little di little document on a switch restoration. Emissions controls for a 73 uh, TR uh, Spitfire GT6 MK3 uh, GT6, GT6 MK and a TR6 and a Stag. So, kind of an interesting document to have. Um, so yeah, so I, I pretty much grab whatever I can and file it away um, because at, at some point I know I'm going to need it. So anyway, hopefully uh, this video hasn't been too boring for you, um, but I just wanted to show you what uh, what information I have that I use on a daily basis when I'm working on my cars. Um, definitely makes it more easy um, when you have all the materials that you need. Uh, plus, obviously, having the experience of the uh, the YouTube Garage Gang that. Uh, that helps out a lot um, as well. So if there's any questions I need to not, need to ask, I know there's you know some experts out there will be able to help me out. Um, so I think that's about it. I'm not sure how this how long this video is, and hopefully I haven't bored you too much. But I'll let you go now, and I'll upload this. Uh, have a great day, everybody, and we'll talk to you later.